right, yes, ladies, you may be seated. Let us celebrate. Every praise is to our God. It is so wonderful to be together in this place, in person, that you have come from all over the state of Florida to be united together to live out the challenge of Scripture. Ephesians 5.19 says, When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let me just tell you one thing. You look good. I'm loving all the pops of colors. I've been hugging folks all out in the lobby. And uh, I got permission from uh, Major Benita to wear all the colors. So uh, there we go. You know, worship is a festival. And if anybody on earth has the right to celebrate, it's those of us who have committed our lives to Jesus Christ and been accepted into God's family. We have a new family member in the women's department that I have the privilege of introducing to you for the first time publicly. Major Benita Morris. Will you stand, Benita? She is a woman of God who knows where her strength comes from. I think she's a powerhouse, ladies. She, she might not know that I know this about her, but she convinced her whole family to join the Salvation Army when, in Norfolk, Virginia when she was only nine years old. God started early in her life, and I'm so happy that we have had this year together in ministry. Greet with me again our First Lady here, Benita Morris. She planned this weekend for you. She put her heart and soul into making this a God-honoring celebration, and we thank you for that. Psalms 149.1 says, it tells us the kind of song to sing. Sing to God a brand new song and praise him in the company of all who love him. I thought to myself, why a new song? But I believe it's because God wants to do something new and fresh in each of our lives. You know, the Bible is full of celebrations, feasts and festivals and holidays because they're an important way to mark progress in our lives. There is great power in remembering but too often, I find myself, and maybe you do too, so busy moving on to the next activity or task that we don't stop and celebrate what has been accomplished. And that's what we want to do together this weekend. Philippians 4.4 4 in the message says, Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in Him. Our guest this weekend know how to celebrate God all day, every day. So let me introduce to you a few of our friends that are going to lead us this weekend together. First off, it's Jennifer Dake. She is on an adventure for God. She currently lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and her passion is to live life to the fullest, and she shows it. I just met Jennifer, but I can tell that she is a boatload of fun. And she's going to share her wacky, weird, and wonderful experiences that God has put into her life. She's been at one of our divisional gatherings a few years ago, so let's welcome back to Florida our guest, Jennifer Dake. Will you stand? <laughs> Colonel Susan Buckowitz is a woman of God who grew up in the Midwest, one of five daughters, so she knows women's ministry firsthand. She has been a Salvation Army officer since 1981, and oh, the story she can tell. And we're so glad that the Salvation Army brought her to the Southern Territory to serve as our Territorial Secretary for Women's Ministry and Officer Development. Susan tells it like it is. She is a gifted storyteller and communicator of the gospel. And you will love her facial expressions and laugh as she shares with us. Please greet Colonel Susan Buckowitz. The lady in red tonight. We also have Apostle LaQuinla Hunter, is from Virginia Beach, and she was called to preach at the age of 13. 
God has gifted her with the power to communicate along with leadership skills, business acumen, and writing skills. She is loaded with love and enthusiasm to share and preach the gospel. Oh, and by the way, she is Major Henry Morris's cousin, your claim to fame this weekend. Will you greet with me Apostle Laquinla Hunter? We'll hear from each of them tonight and tomorrow in the main sessions. Revelation 5, 13, 11 through 13 tells us that heaven is going to be a giant celebration. Let's start practicing our celebration skills now so our hearts will be ready for heaven. And the time that we spend singing his praises here on earth will just whet our appetites for the day when the song will never end. Every time I celebrate God with others, I'm practicing for heaven. So let's get this weekend going again, ladies. Stand to your feet as the praise band continues to lead us to celebrate as we practice for heaven. Here we go. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready to continue to bless him? He is a holy God. Do you believe that tonight? So the song we're getting ready to sing is a song that I know you, you know. It's an old song. Worthy to receive all of the glory, right? And all of the praises. So tonight, for the rest of the weekend, I'm inviting you to be free to worship. You all don't have to wait on me to prompt you or to coach you. But I want you to enjoy Jesus this weekend and celebrate what he's done for you and who he is to you. Amen.
ladies sing the highest praise to our father tonight. And I want to hear you sing praise him and lift him up. Come on and shake your sister next to you. Come on, sister, we got to praise him and lift him up. I want to hear the audience sing praise him and lift him up. Hey, hey, pray. Everybody. Come on and praise him.
enough to praise him. That is enough to worship him and to recognize him as being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
don't feel you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. gather together to focus on you. We are so thankful that we're able to come together as a body of believers to celebrate you. Father, we pray for women who are newcomers to this gathering. We pray that you would draw them into conversations easily and that they will feel comfortable and welcome. Father, whatever place these women are in in their life, we pray that the messages, scriptures, and activities during this gathering would speak personally to their circumstances. Give them courage to open up and to build friendships. Lord, we are asking for healing and victories this weekend. Lord, help us to be women who commit to your plans. We go through so many challenges as women, and there are times we struggle. But we know that you created us for a purpose. And by your grace, we can handle everything that you've given us. Help us to commit to your plans and to our relationship with you so that we may stay on the path that you have planned for each one of us, not just as mothers, sisters, or wives, but as women who are committed to serving you, Lord. We pray for our guests, Lord. We ask that your words be spoken through them to our ears. We ask that your love be shown from their hearts to ours. Lord, I pray that we see you radiating through them. Lord, let them be your vessel in which your words will be spoken. 
our prayer is that it will be spoken in love and truth. Again, Lord, we give you the praise because you are worthy to be praised. We ask all this in your matchless name. Amen. You may be seated. Are y'all having fun yet? All right, we're here to celebrate. We will be celebrating each one of you. And by the end of these two days, if you don't feel like you've been celebrated, come see me or Colonel Don or one of the women on our team, and we will celebrate with you. This evening, we want to continue in our celebration with Miss Jennifer Dake. She is, as was stated before, from Nashville, Tennessee, and she lives there with her husband, Nate, and their two children, who will be officers one day. She don't know this, though. <laughs> Jennifer, she proudly speaks to audience across the country about her passion and that she loves the Lord. I won't give you her bio. I'm going to let her come on stage and finish her story. Let's welcome Miss Jennifer Day. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Try that again. I'm sorry. I know you got more in you. I do. Let's try that again. Good evening. Yes, I know you had it in you. Oh, this is a big podium. I'm just going to move it. Don't get mad at me. Okay. I need a little room because sometimes I move, so try to stay track with me here. My name is Jennifer Dake. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm just so excited to be in Florida again. I feel like it's probably been five years since I've been with you all, and I have missed you. I cannot believe it. Um, I'm just so excited to be back. Let me be giddy for a minute and see all your faces. Okay, here we are. So I was given the question to answer on my first night, how do you celebrate the Lord? And I was like, thanks for such an easy question. Like, I wish I could just say, I sit down at my coffee table and I drink a little coffee and I say, yay, Jesus. And then my life is great and perfect. Like, wouldn't that be so nice? But that's not it. So I started to think, okay, how do I celebrate them? Well, I really need to know why I celebrate them. Right, like, why do we celebrate Jesus? And then I thought, how funny would it be if I ran out my door every morning in my neighborhood and was like, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Like, people would be like, oh, no. Like, what happened? I'm like, I know I celebrate because Jesus died. Right, like, I get that. But that's just a weird celebration to have, and you can't have that one by yourself. So I'm going to wait till Easter and rest, celebrate that he rose. But he only rose because he died, right? Like, yay! But I know that he died for my sins, but I'm not running around saying, Jesus died for my sins, yay! Because I feel like so many people are like, ooh, what kind of sins do you have? And then I'm like, that's not what we're celebrating. I know I have them, but I'm not telling you about them at all. So I had to sit for a while and be like, Jesus, why? Why do I celebrate you? And I feel like I landed in Psalm 136. I celebrate the Lord because his steadfast love endures forever. Can I get an amen to that one? I mean, that translates to me. His love is there in the midst of my chaos, my frustration, my hurt, my loneliness, my confusion, my anger, and my disappointment. God loves me. His love endures. He doesn't mind if I'm mad at him or angry at the whole world. In that moment, my heavenly father and creator says, I love you. I'm here for you. And I get it. And for that, I know I can celebrate because my creator is with me every step of the journey. When it was told that I was coming back to Florida, I had a few of you women ask me for this, and so I added it into tonight. I have a friend who lives in New York City. Those of you who heard me speak before, do you know her name? Do you remember it? Anyone? It's what I name all my friends in my stories because I don't want to be mean and use their real names. Katie. 
I have a friend named Katie. It's not her real name. That would be mean. But I have this friend Katie, and she lives in New York City. She moved there from the south. She was a good little southern girl with a good little sweet old southern accent. She was nice to everybody. It was a little strange because not all New Yorkers are nice. But she was nice, and she got to know all her neighbors real well. And the one day she was in her apartment, and her neighbor came, doo, 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 knocked on the door and said, I need you to watch my dog. She said, I'm oh, sorry, I don't like dogs. You know, because in the South, which I've seen a couple of these here, it's kind of confusing to me. In the South, we have these little things called purse puppies. You just stick them in your purse and you like walk around with them, right? That's what we got in Nashville. In like New York City, you got like big man dogs, right? Like these things are enormous. So she's used to little purse puppies. She's like, I don't watch dogs. And he said, I don't care. You're the nicest person I know. Our dog sitter canceled and my wife and I are leaving on vacation. Here's our keys. And he left with his luggage out the door. And she's like, okay. I'm like, Katie, what did you do? She's like, well, I decided I had to be a good neighbor and I would watch the man's dog. So the first day she goes over, she unlocks the apartment door and she goes, here, poochie, 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 waiting for the little poochie, poochie to come. And out of nowhere, she sees this <laughs> huge 80 pound dog running at her. And she's like, good dog, good dog, right? Like terrified. She probably was 80 pounds. So she goes in and she like feeds the dog, waters the dog, opens the little thing and is like, go potty, right? Like gets the dog. It's like, goodbye dog, leaves. And this goes on for three days where she like opens the door and the dog runs at her. <laughs> Good pooch, feeds, waters, potties, you know, does the whole spiel. On the fourth day, she goes back and she opens the door and she's like, I was smart. I opened it and went, you know, right? <laughs> and no dog. She's like, here, poochie, poochie, hello. She's like, just about the time I thought, it's a little weird walking around this guy's whole apartment, right? She sees the dog laying on the bed. She's like, you little stinker, I gotta go to work. So she walks into the apartment and she gets in the bedroom, she gets where she, and she's like, doo, 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 like, get up. And the dog doesn't move. The dog is dead. And she's like, okay, I got a plan. She calls the guy. She's like, sir, your dog is dead. He said, oh, you can't leave a dead dog in my apartment. You have to take it to the vet. She said, I'm sorry, but you don't seem to understand. The dog is dead. Like the vet is doing nothing. Well, you just can't leave it there. Okay, I said, Katie, what'd you do? She said, well, I went back to my apartment and went to my bedroom. And I got that uh, huge suitcase down my grandma gave me that I always thought was ugly. Zip, zip, poo, poo. Zip, zip. Oh, I just put the dog in a suitcase and I just went and she walked right out of the apartment building dunk, 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 straight out to the street and being the good southern girl she is she can't really whistle she was so she's like no taxis are coming for that so she's like it's okay I got myself a plan and she took that suitcase she's like I'm gonna walk to the subway get on the train take the dog to the vet. We're good. But Katie said as she walked and she started passing people and they were like, hi, you want to buy an orange? She's like, get out of my face. She's like, I just became a New Yorker in one minute flat. She's like, I want to talk to you. And she said, I was encompassed with this fear that people would know I had an 80 pound dead dog in a suitcase. And then what would they think of me as a human being? So she's getting there, she gets to the subway, she has fully offended anyone who has come into her sight, dunk, 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 dunk. and she gets to that turnstile thing. And she's looking at it, she looks at the suitcase, she looks at the turnstile, she's like, there's no way this is going to fit. I can't lift it, I, what am I going to do? And right when she said she felt like nothing could get worse, an angel appears in the form of a very large man. And he says, what seems to be the problem? Well, I'm new here. And uh, I got a suitcase that I need to get on the train. Oh, what you got in your suitcase? Stuff. What kind of stuff? Stuff for my apartment, because I'm new. So I bought some stuff in the suitcase to go to my new apartment, new stuff. Stuff that doesn't smell funny, stuff. 
Uh huh. And the guy says, well, ma'am, I'm so glad you're new here. You know, we're all real nice. You just give me the suitcase, go through the turnstile, and I'll just lift it over to you. I'm big and strong. I'll just hand it to you. Okay. She hands him the suitcase. She walks through the turnstile. She turns around, and what does she see? The man has stolen her dead dog. He is running away with the suitcase in hand. I'm like, Katie, what did you do? She goes, I mean, what? She's like, what was I going to do? I'm not going to use a suitcase again. I didn't care. I went back through the turnstile and went home, left for work. I'm like, you let that man steal your dead dog. She's like, I know. It didn't have a good ending for him. I mean, can we imagine? I'm not even going to go there right yet. Here's the deal. I know. I know y'all brought suitcases in. You left at the hotel. Got your clothes in it. I know that. But what you might not know is when you all walked in that back door, I watched you. Bringing your suitcase in. Making sure people don't see it. Some of you got like little dead Rottweilers. You know, some of you got like chihuahuas, some of you got like full-size poodles, shoved it and you carrying it around. The last two years has not been easy. There has been all sorts of dead dogs thrown at you. And for some of us, the only coping mechanism has been like shove it in the suitcase and carry it along. What else am I going to do with it? Sometimes we get them because we're frustrated, because we live in a fallen, broken world, and people are just unkind, right? Like, there's all sorts of dead dogs. I could spend the rest of my time this weekend naming things that turn into dead dogs, but I don't need to, because you know what they are. You can already think, oh, I know what my dead dog is. I know when it came. Some of you have dead dogs that have been rotting away since you were five years old. And somebody in your life told you you were too loud or too this or too that or just needed to be gone. And you're like, oh, that's a dead dog. Shove it in there. Your suitcase got bigger. Your dog's still dead and stinky. And you're still carrying it. And what happens is when we start carrying that around and people want to get close to us and have interaction, we're like, yeah, but if you know what's in my suitcase, I'm just going to back up. Because if you knew what was in here, you wouldn't want to be here. So let me just back up a little bit. And we start building this wall. Before our COVID six feet, we had our dead dog extensions. Right? We're like, I'm just going to stay here. But what we fail to realize is the very person we are talking to has their suitcase of their own dead dogs. Right? We're all broken, carrying stinky luggage. And it is time that we take it. And we look at Jesus who's saying, you know, if you just give it to me, if you just let me hold it for a minute, you can walk freely in that direction. Those spaces you don't fit because the luggage is too heavy to take with you, you can freely walk through without it. And I will remove your sin as far as the east is from the west to never meet again. Can I get an amen? Sometimes I cannot celebrate him whose love is steadfast because I'm so busy trying to hide this that I forget the creator of the universe has a love that endures through it all who desires to take my burden away from me so that I can walk in the freedom and joy of the Lord. That is what this weekend is. You walked in here with a suitcase of dead dogs. Leave it here and do not take it home with you again. Katie said when she left the subway, she was talking to everybody. She's like, remember that orange you wanted to sell me? I'll buy it now. Oh, you have flowers. How are you today? She's like, the feeling of freedom was just flowing outward. When your joy becomes restored, you have the ability to train your mind to celebrate 
the smallest of things. Because now it's not one more thing to weave through with this suitcase, but to two-handedly embrace the good hand of my God was upon me today. My friends and I have this thing we call the praise train. I think it's a little funny sometimes. But we made an agreement that on our praise train, everybody has their own car. And whatever's in that car is good enough. Because what I praise the Lord for today may not be what you praise the Lord for. And what you praise the Lord for today has just as much value as what I praise the Lord for. And there would be no showing each other up on the praise train. We sit in our car, we deliver praise, we can walk in and out of each other's cars. They're all different. I join you in your praise and you join me in mine. But there is no judgment. Because some days we show up to the praise train and all we got is, I had the strength to get out of bed and take a shower today. And I praise God that he was there. And I'm telling you, someday that's my praise. <laughs> my life might be pretty barn painted and nice clothes today. But this isn't every day because I walk with the Lord. And when you walk with the Lord, life is messy. Amen? When you walk with the Lord, sometimes life is hard. And your biggest praise is, I got to nighttime. And I have the strength to put myself to bed. And that's enough to be praised for. In other days, you'll have much greater ones. How do I celebrate him? I celebrate him with my friends in the praise train. I celebrate him when I allow myself. I had to write this down because sometimes I get a little hyper. Colonel laughed at my yellow legal pad, but I'm just telling you it never shuts off on stage. Okay. I celebrate him in my life by letting go of the past, which is a process. Do not think I'm so foolish to say, come let go of your dead dogs. You all gonna walk up here and be like, boop, and walk away and be like, yay, my life is perfect. It is a process. This is the first step of the process. Because some of you will walk up and be like, here, Jesus, have my dead dogs. Oh, I'm gonna pick it up and walk back with it. You know what I mean? Like you're just gonna drag one of them dead puppies out of the suitcase to go, just because it's your comfort blanket. I celebrate him by, in my life by letting go of the past the process, being present in the moment. Don't forget the present celebration. If you are here thinking about when you get home and what a mess your kids are going to be, you're missing this celebration. Celebrate. Worry about your kids when you get home. That's what I'm doing. I know they're eating ice cream every minute with daddy. <laughs> being present in the moment with an ever-present hope for the future. Because I trust that God's love is steadfast so I can celebrate. And if you are here this weekend and you get to a moment where everybody around you is dancing and you think, I just got to sit down because I'm overwhelmed and I don't feel like celebrating, then sit in the very presence of the brokenness with the Lord and allow Him to celebrate you. Because if you haven't heard it before, let me tell you, the creator of the universe delights in you. He thinks you are beautiful, wonderful, created in great glory you are. And he delights in you. Sit and allow him to speak that over you. So that he can start the healing of your heart. Move you towards a celebration. Because in Psalm 136 it says... I mean, the whole psalm is great. I'm going to skip to the end. It says, he remembered us when we were humiliated because his love endures forever. He snatched us from the grasp of our enemies because his mercy endures forever. He gives food to every living creature because his love is steadfast. Let us give thanks to God who loves Wherever you are this weekend, when you entered those doors, God's love is steadfast for you. His mercy endures. My prayer is that when you leave out those doors this weekend, you will not leave the same. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to celebrate with these women. And I pray that you will bring us to a place of healing and celebration in your steadfast love. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.
There you are. Thank you so much. Oh, it's great to be here tonight. I've been looking forward to the, see the light, pull my pants up. I know, <laughs> I know that wasn't graceful, but I forgot my belt. So, so there you go. Uh, it is so great to be with you tonight. And uh, I just can't believe, well, I can believe how God fits everything together and already from the praise band to our sister Jennifer we we know I think we know what God wants to say to us tonight and tomorrow so just open your mind open your heart and let him pour his truth into you will you do that all righty uh, I've got a clicker which is dangerous all right here we go. Can you see that? There we go. I love this slide. Isn't this the story of women? Isn't it? Yeah. And look how she's pushing back. You know, all the ugliness. That's us, ladies. That's us in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, just pushing back the darkness. Well, actually, that is really a shameless plug for my workshop, The Struggle is Real. So, so I just thought I would do a quick commercial. <laughs> Here's the thing. I love funny church signs. And you can get a great sermon from just a phrase or a sentence. If you want uh, a break from funny dogs, funny kittens, and funny babies google funny church signs not now but you know sometime when you have some free time google funny church signs and i guarantee you will laugh out loud because some of them are really really good here are a few of my favorite there it is be the kind of person your dog thinks you are jesus is god selfie I love this one. Tweet others the way you'd like to be tweeted. Honk, and I love this. Honk if you love Jesus. Text while driving if you want to meet him. Mm -hmm. These are church signs. And here's my personal favorite. Don't give up. Moses was once a basket case. Now that gives me hope. I was reading in Psalms uh, 107 a uh, couple of weeks ago and was just struck by how this Psalm 107 is the before and after of my life. And I thought um, in the, the um, subject that we were given to speak about tonight, how we celebrate him, this is what I thought would be really a good thing to share with you tonight because this is all about celebration, but you have to get through the ugly first. So I want to show you four signs that I think are in Psalm 107. The first one, danger, people wandering in the desert. Next one, caution. Prisoners in chains, rebellious, hazard ahead, people sitting in darkness, high wind alert, storms likely. So I was struck by the words of uh, 107, Psalm 107, and how it told the story of my life, my before and after, my condition before I met Christ, and the after, when Christ came into my life and made me whole and made me his. That's what I celebrate. And you know, celebrating does have its um, a foundation in Thanksgiving. We celebrate birthdays because we're, we're thankful that that person was born. We celebrate uh, graduations because we're glad this person made it through school. We celebrate weddings 
because we're so glad they finally got married. So it's a celebration and we're thankful for those celebrations. So my celebrations are always based on thankfulness for the goodness of God. And I wanna share with you the new signs that I celebrate because they declare what God has done for me. There we go. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord. This is how the Psalm starts. For he is good. His love endures forever. Doesn't that sound like what you shared, Jennifer? Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. All righty. Danger. People wandering in the desert. In their misery, they cried out to the Lord and he saved them from their troubles. He led them on a straight road to a city. Now, let me tell you about what God did. He led them in a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men, for he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. The next sign. Caution, prisoners suffering in chains. The scripture says, some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons. Why? For they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. And the next sign. Watch out for fools that are near death. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Prisoners, oops, I'm in the wrong one. Here we go. Some were fools for their, since, uh, for their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities, they suffered affliction. And they loathed any kind of food. Now, this is, this is the part of the psalm that is not a part of my story, because I can't imagine me loathing any kind of food. So... That's a little different for me. Uh, but they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their, in their misery and their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and he healed them. He rescued them from the grave. And then the last one, high wind alert, storms likely, some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men, and were at their wit's end. On April 1st, 2020, I experienced a trauma in my life that capsized the boat of my life. Someday I hope I'll be able to share the details with you. <clears throat> but um, this trauma was so severe that it made me rethink my entire life and the truth of what I was living. I found that I couldn't even pray. I had no idea where God was. And I had no idea 
how to get out of the darkness I was in. But I'm telling you, God is in the darkness. God is in the trauma. And even today, two years later, I celebrate April 1st because April 1st is the day God began healing me and showing me truth and manifesting himself to me in a way he let me know that he was in every single part of my life, even the trauma, even the ugly that came and upset my life. God was there. And as soon as I turned my heart to him, the healing began. And I was aware of his goodness, I was aware of his healing, and I was aware of his faithfulness. So my celebration of him is always about thankfulness. And I end with this, whoops. Whoever is wise, will remember these things and will think about the love of the Lord, remembering what he's done for me. That's how I celebrate him. What are you feeling tonight? What have you experienced in your life? What has capsized the boat of your life? Are you floundering in the waves? God is there. I can testify to that. He can turn that boat around and bring you safely to harbor. I know it's true because he's done it for me. And I celebrate that. God bless you.
hard up in here, but we can roll on the river of Jordan. Hallelujah. If you've been baptized with the fire of the Holy Ghost, you are in connection with Jesus. We are praising, praising our Savior, praising our deliverer, praising our healer. I see some of you ladies out there trying, I can't do it. Let's go. Let's get it. celebrate <laughs> hallelujah come on open up your mouth and let's just bless God with a loud sound come on you can't say celebrate and be quiet you can't stay celebrate and be quiet I got any radical people in here come on just open up your mouth and say hallelujah glory hallelujah. oh yes we're so excited to be here and God is good Cel celebrate is like a command you know, cel celebrate requires action. Um, anybody ever been to the club? Okay, okay. Okay, y'all ain't ready. Anybody ever been to the club? Okay, anybody ever been to a football game? Anybody ever been to a basketball game? And has your favorite team ever won? Did you sit there and just like, oh, I'm so excited? You went crazy. Can we go crazy for Jesus for just a minute? Oh, y'all still sick? Has he saved anybody? Has he healed anybody? Has he been a way maker for anybody? Has he been a provider? Oh, come on, I need some radical folks. Sometimes I leap. <laughs> Sometimes I leap. You know, you, you ever, okay, here we go. I hear you, Holy Ghost. You ever had this shopping list and your money didn't match what you had to buy? Okay. And you go in and God makes all type of coupons and deals. Open up for you. I don't know about you. It makes me want to give him glory. It makes me want to give him praise. Are you ready? Have you ever went into a doctor's appointment? And the last report you got was unfavorable. But this time when you go back, they say, I don't see any cancer. I don't see any diabetes. Y'all, y'all. Has your marriage ever been on the break? And you saw God turn your, in a minute, I'm going to call somebody's number. You saw God turn your marriage around. Wouldn't that make you want to give God glory? Are you ready? Has your child ever went astray and you seen them come back to God? Doesn't that make you want to give him glory? Let me go deeper. When Jesus got on that cross and he died for all of our sins, doesn't that make you want to give him glory? I need you to get up for a few minutes and thank God for your redemption. Thank God for his blood. Hallelujah. And so how, how do I praise him? How do I celebrate him? I celebrate him with thanksgiving. Everything about, I command my body. I command my mind. I command my heart. And your theme today says celebrate always. Pray, pray constantly and give thanks to God no matter what. And so during my time of prayer, I said, God, where are we going? He says, I want you to take them to the book of Luke. Because in this room, we have Marys and we have Elizabeths. We have two different generations in this room. Two generations with purposes, two generations with promises, two generations that God is opening doors for. And so when we look at Luke, 
um, chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 39. It says, And Mary arose in that day and went into the hill country with haste, into the city of Judea. And she entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby in her womb leaped and was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation was sounded in my ear, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of these things which were told from her. If I would, I would use for two short topics, leap, baby, leap. And for a subtopic, it's on the way. Let me just paint the picture. Here it is, um, chapter um, Luke 1, Mary, the angel comes to her, and he tells her, you're blessed, you're highly favored above all women. And that the Lord is going to impregnate you with his son. And then the angel tells her, fear not. What do you do when God wants to do something for you that is unbelievable? When he wants to do something for you that man says can't be done. When he wants to do something for you that seems impossible. When he wants to do something for you that anybody here need God to do something for you that man cannot do. Just holler up in here. There's some things man can't do. There's some things I can't figure out. There's some things that overwhelm me, but yet I still hear the voice of God saying, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to provide for you. Here is Mary getting impossible news that how in the world are you going to be pregnant and you're engaged to a man by the name of Joseph? They're going to shun you. They're going to put you out. Sometimes when God shares something with you and you share it with others, they will not believe it. But God says this weekend, the unbelievable things are going to happen for you. This weekend, the impossible things are going to happen for you. This weekend, you're going to see things in your life realign. And God says, I'm going to restore everything that the coronavirus tried to take from you. Your joy, your peace. Yo, oh, somebody shut up in here and say, I will be free. Look at this. Mary gets this word that she's going to be impregnated with Jesus. An imperfect person carrying a perfect gift. Do you know tonight we're imperfect people, but God has put a perfect gift in us? And so the Bible says that Mary gets this news. And she says, be it to me according to what you have said. See, sometimes we talk ourselves out of the greatness God is speaking over us because of our imperfections. Have you, oh, God can't do it for me. I'm still struggling. God can't do it for me. I still lie. Oh, God can't do it for me because I still got a boo on the side, y'all. Okay, we came to be real, right? Everybody, let me revelate you. God going to let you know what type of boo you should have in your life because some of you got the wrong boo. <laughs> Somebody said, work on me, Lord. <laughs> she says, be it, be it unto me according to thy word. And the Bible says, and we'll find ourselves in the scripture where we're heading, that she is on her way to go see Elizabeth. Elizabeth is her cousin. And Elizabeth has a different situation. Elizabeth and her husband were, were barren. They were old. They weren't supposed to be able to have children. I want to talk to another group in this room that thinks you're too old and that God can't use you and you just want to sit down and waste away. We need you! I wish y'all would holler up in here. 
I need, I need somebody over 50 to say, I'm not going to die. Y'all not going to shut me up. I'm going to yell with you. I'm going to jump with you. I'm going to shout with you. I'm going to pray with you. See, the enemy wants to isolate generations. You know how you look. Oh, those, those, those are those young people. They can just go for hours. Are you ready? God's going to anoint you and run you for hours. He's going to reverse your age. He's going to reverse your strength. The Bible says that, oh, my God, when Joshua and Caleb entered into the promise that they had the same strength at 80 that they had at 40. If some of y'all would praise the Lord, he would strengthen you. He would reverse. Oh, I'm preaching up in here. So, so, oh, my God, what is she doing? Here we have Mary. We have Elizabeth. The Bible says Elizabeth is now six months pregnant. The barren one, the one that is old, the one that is too late. So now you have Mary, who is pregnant, Elizabeth, who is pregnant, and Elizabeth is six months. Somebody say, revelate me. Mary isn't jealous of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth isn't jealous of Mary because they're both carrying something. What Mary is carrying, she needs the assistance of Elizabeth. And what Elizabeth is carrying, she needs the assistance of Mary. This weekend, God is going to show us how much we can assist one another. Bible says that Mary walks in the house. Somebody said, revelate me. God's going to send people that know how to walk into a house and speak well over you. Walk in a house and pronounce blessing over you. Walk in a house and tell you how blessed and highly favored you are. You know, some people will hate and put their mouth on you in a crazy way. But in this season, people are going to bathe you with love. They're going to bathe you with kindness. They're going to bathe you with thanksgiving. They're going to bathe you with trust. I wish for a minute we could just jump up and just give God glory and say, I want you to send people that speak well of me. I want you to speak people to speak into my life. Oh, some of y'all still sitting there. Can you help me one minute and say, God, send people in my life to bless me. Send people in my life to push me. Send people in my life to inspire me. Look at this. Oh, yeah, I do that type of thing. <laughs> Look at this. Mary walks up in Elizabeth's house. And at the sound of Mary's voice, it is something about a sister that really cares about you. There is something about a sister you can trust. There is something about a sister that won't judge you. There is something about a sister that won't stab you in the back. There is something about a sister that won't lie on you. You, you ever had a bad sister? Until you have experienced a bad sister, you cannot appreciate a good sister. Mary walks through that door. Your whole life is changing, you hear me? Everything about your life is changing. You hear me? God is speaking to you tonight. Be delivered. Be set free. Just lift your hands for one minute and say, I receive it. Come on. You, oh, you help her for one minute. Just say, I receive. Just say, I receive it. So I will live in peace. I will live stress-free. And I will live without anxiety. Tonight is changed for me. Can we celebrate for one minute? Oh, you, you, don't, you don't know how stressed people are. You don't know what people are going through. You, the enemy is trying to destroy you. But God, honey, am I telling the truth? But God's going to raise you up in such a way. I need you for one minute to just lift up your voice and say, do it for me. Come on. Say, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, do it for me. Say, do it for me. Do it for me. 
Do it for me. Come on. Do it for me. Transformation come now. Power come now. Healing come now. Be set free now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace. I speak joy in the name of Jesus. She walks in the house and the greeting on Mary Mary doesn't walk in there with attitude. She doesn't walk in there with jealousy. She doesn't walk in there with chaos. She doesn't walk in there with malice. You know how some people look you up and down? At the salutation of Mary's voice, the baby that was inside of Elizabeth began to leap. Evidence that there was life in her. Evidence that there was promise in her. Evidence. And tonight, there is something leaping in you that God is going to use me. God is going to anoint me. I'm not going home the way I am. I'm not going back stuck. I'm not going back broken. I'm not going back bitter. I'm not going back upset. I'm not going back into sin. But I'm going to allow God to set me free from the crown of my head to the soul of my feet and if my spirit feels like yelling I'm gonna yell and if I feel like crying I'm gonna cry and if I feel like leaping I'm going to leap because there is something inside of me that is alive <laughs> up until this point of time Elizabeth was carrying but it never says she felt anything. Mary's voice activated what was inside of Elizabeth. Don't you feel a call for more? Don't you feel a longing for more? There's got to be more to this Jesus. There's got to be more than just assembling together. There's got to be more. Don't you hear him calling you for signs, miracles, and wonders where when you see somebody sick, you just like the Bible, take your hand and begin to lay hands on them and you begin to see the sick recover. Oh, God says, I'm putting my power back in my people. At the salutation, of Mary's voice Elizabeth's baby begins to leap baby starts dancing starts shouting Mary is excited Elizabeth is excited and she said what what did I deserve that the mother of my Lord would come and see me are you ready? Somebody say, revelate me. Can you imagine that Jesus walked in the room through Mary and John the Baptist was in Elizabeth and John the Baptist was the forerunner for Jesus. They saw their destinies intertwine and it caused a party tonight. Your destiny is intertwining with God. And he's saying, I need you to celebrate how I brought you over these two years where you've watched people die on your left side, die on your right side. Anybody know that COVID could have took you out? Anybody know that depression could have took you out? Anybody know that anxiety could have took you out? If I can get about 20 radical people to just jump on your feet and give God some praise and thank him for life and thank him for joy and think, oh, come on up in here. Come on up in here. Shake yourself. And if I can get a few leapers, come on. He wants to do something for us tonight. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Thank him, Elizabeth. Thank him, Mary. There's life in you. There's purpose in you. There's a high place in God. He's doing things through you. And so this weekend, no, 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 don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. 
this weekend he's saying leap baby leap it could have killed you leap baby leap it could have destroyed you leap baby leap rejoice in the Lord again I say rejoice I'm going to stop right there. This clarion call tonight, if for somebody's in here that says, I have a purpose, there is something living inside of me, and it's time for me to get on my assignment. I mean, you know, it's getting late in the day. You, you don't even have time to be petty anymore. People are here today, gone tomorrow. Some of you, 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 you haven't slept in months, but tonight there is a peace that's coming to your sleep. If that's you, I just need you to scream one minute. Thank you. But tonight, if you would, meet me at this altar. If you're saying, I feel something inside of me moving. I want to do things different. I got a purpose. I want to walk in it in its fullness. Just meet me at this. Oh, I knew it would be a lot of young ones. Come on. Oh, you ought to rejoice when the young come. You ought to rejoice when the young come. You ought to rejoice when, the young come. You ought to rejoice when let the old and the young celebrate. Ah, oh, rejoice. Rejoice that there's another generation that is raising up. Rejoice that there's another generation loving God. Come on, there's some more of you in this room. Purpose, purpose, purpose. Come on, purpose, purpose. I have an assignment. I'm definitely to be Give me one minute. And for many of you, Tonight is a turning point for you. A turning point. What, what am I here for, God? He says, you're here to show forth his glory, his good work. And you think, am I ever going to get out of this? God says, I'm going to restore you. Yeah, Ooh, Just lift your hands, daughter. Lift your hands and receive it. I just need you praying out there. Oh, all you got to do is say, thank you, Lord. And, and if you really feel like interceding, just stretch your hands out. But everything that troubles your heart tonight, be lifted. Every lie the enemy told you, be destroyed. And walk in freedom. Huh? Great and mighty works. You have purpose. Woo, you have purpose. <laughs> Come on, you got purpose. He's going to use you. He's going to raise you up. You got purpose. You got purpose. You got purpose, purpose, Pur oh, purpose, 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 power, 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 power. Oh, Come on, just lift your hands. God, he loves you. He lo no shame. No condemnation. No shame. No condemnation. Be free. Be free. Be free. Ooh, be free. Oh, come on, give glory in this place. Give God glory in this place. Come on, don't you sit in your seat. Open up your mouth and thank God for being a deliverer. Why well, sing about a God that can't move? Oh, great soul winner. Oh, God. He's moving. Yes, he's moving in your home. That anxiety is lifting. That tormenting spirit is lifting. Joy, 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 joy. Help her for one minute. Somebody shout, joy. Cool city, they make it. Oh, the peace of God. The peace of God. The peace of God go with you home. The peace of God go with you everywhere you walk. The peace of God.
come on in. As you're up here, just open up your mouth and say, Lord, come on, say, Lord, tonight I rededicate myself and I surrender myself unto you for your purpose and for your will. I denounce the works of Satan and I take on the works of Jesus. And I need you with the top of your voice just to give God the loudest praise you can give him. Come on, keep going, don't stop. Come on, don't stop. Can y'all help them? Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on, don't stop. Come on, come on. Don't stop. Come on. Don't let this environment stop you. Come on, God said, leap, leap, leap. Come on, just begin to leap. Come on, just begin to celebrate. Just begin to thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, let your mouth be filled with goodness to him. Come on. Unrestricted. When you lift those hands, that means I surrender. I let down my will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready to move out of your way. Now take those arms and wrap them around yourself. Those are the arms of Jesus holding you. Those are the arms of Jesus restoring you. Those are the arms of Jesus reviving you. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Come on, give him thunderous cloud in here. Can we stand on our feet and glorify God for his goodness? God is with you. Look at the person to the side of you and say, I see God all over you. Come on, look at him and say, I see God all over you. Come on, look at that person beside you and say, I see God all over you. I see God all over you. I see God, I see God all over you. I see God all over you. Woo! God bless you.
gracias en este día por tu presencia en este lugar te doy gracias por traer a cada una de mis hermanas con bien sabemos que contigo no hay casualidades estamos aquí con un propósito y ese propósito es alabarte Señor porque no importa qué pasemos en esta vida tu nombre es digno de ser alabado Tú mereces toda la gloria y toda la honra, Señor. Y todas nosotras aquí estamos en diferentes etapas de nuestras vidas, pero todas tenemos cargas. Y tú no nos has pedido que dejemos las cargas atrás, sino que las traigamos ante ti. Y eso lo hacemos en este momento, Señor. Pero aún con eso, Señor, en medio de todas las cosas y todas las batallas que pasamos, enséñanos a disfrutar de tu presencia. No importa por lo que pasemos, no importan las malas rachas, las tormentas de la vida, lo más importante es que te tenemos a ti. Y tú mereces todo, Señor. El simple hecho de que tú nos has rescatado es suficiente para tener gozo en nuestros corazones. Bendito eres, Señor. Ayúdanos, Señor, a verte, a realmente encontrarte cara a cara. Job, aún en medio de sus aflicciones, Reconoció, te reconoció a ti Señor ayúdanos a decir como Job de oídas te había oído pero ahora mis ojos te ven y el hecho de que estamos aquí ahora mismo podemos sentir tu presencia y te damos gracias por ello Señor eres digno por siempre de la alabanza te celebramos hoy y siempre y no importa lo que pasamos porque al final de cuentas Señor todo nos prepara para la vida venidera para una eternidad llena de gozo contigo donde te alabaremos por siempre gracias Señor y te amamos te amamos Señor y es en el nombre precioso de Jesús que oramos amén amén nous avons présence sur nos moments. Nous avons action de grâce à vous parce que c'est grâce que vous faites nous. Je que nous même tout Seigneur ou dépenser avec nous. Nous nous remercions Seigneur parce que fidélité au oh Dieu il est toujours là ensemble avec nous oh Dieu. Nous nous remercions Seigneur parce que vous va jamais changer. Et quel que soit le nous besoin au oh Seigneur ou toujours là pour nous. Merci parce que vous avez bonne opportunité Seigneur pour nous être là. Nous te conduisons, oh Dieu, nous chaque qui est là, Seigneur tout puissant, nous te donnons nos protections, nous te prenons volant pour nous, Seigneur, nous te permettons de nous arriver sains et saufs. Nous venons en présence, oh Seigneur, côté pour nous adorer, oh Seigneur Dieu. Nous nous remercions parce que nous connaissons cet esprit où il est là et la continue là ensemble avec nous. Nous remercions chaque petit Dieu qui est là, Seigneur, à soi. Il y a un pile de nous qui vient là, Seigneur, nous charger. Fato la vie, Seigneur, les dieux sous de nous. Mais pendant que nous venons, Seigneur, pour nous célébrer, oh Seigneur, permettre que nous capables de déposer tout le fardeau qui doit lourd dans nos pieds. Parce que nous connaissons, Seigneur, c'est nous-mêmes qui prenons tout le fardeau. Il y a un pile dans nous, Seigneur, qui va même sentir que nous ne pas célébrer. Mais le Seigneur, il nous songe à fidélité. Nous connaissons quelles que soient les circonstances qui sont dans la vie. Nous avons toujours besoin nos gloire, Seigneur, parce que nous fidèles. Et nous connaissons, nous, Seigneur, et nous comprenons. Nous. Nous demandons s'il vous plaît que la présence soit capable de continuer ensemble avec nous. Et faire que nous soyons capables de sentir que nous sommes là avec nous, oh Dieu Tout-Puissant. Pendant que Seigneur nous avons passé tant ensemble, permettre que, oh Dieu Tout-Puissant, nous allons quitter là, Seigneur. Nous allons retourner là, car nous allons dire que nous bon, que nous agréable pour nous dans la présence. Parce que nous sentons que nous sommes au travail dans nous, Seigneur. Nous demandons soulager que nous. Il y a un pile dans nous, Seigneur, la joie, Seigneur, elle est loin nous. Il y a un pile, Seigneur, qui a un pile d'inquiétude. Mais nous demandons au Seigneur, ou même qui compte bailler la paix, ou même qui c'est le prince de la paix, pour capable de rétablir la paix dans que chaque petit de qui est là, Seigneur. Et pour ça, on va sentir vraiment que on va mouvementer dans la vie. Nous comptons sur vous, Seigneur, parce que nous connaissons, Seigneur, ou même nous toujours faire route pour qu'il n'y ait pas route, oh Dieu. Pour ça, Seigneur, aidez-nous pour ne pas fatiguer, nous, Seigneur, le problème la vie. Mais pour nous qui déjà nous fixer sur vous, connaissez, Seigneur, ou même qui avez commencé ensemble avec nous, pour continuer, Seigneur, à faire route là avec nous. Pour te promettre, nous, pour quitter nous, aidez-nous pour nous rester confiants, pour nous aimer ensemble avec nous, et pour ça, nous, nous comptons sur vous. À 
accepter la prière, nous, Seigneur. Rétez avec nous. Et chaque ça qui est pour faire, Seigneur, nous remercions ça. Et peut-être que ce n'est pas sans avec chair qui va faire rien. Peut-être que c'est présence cet esprit qui va travailler, Seigneur. Servir avec mon Dieu tout puissant. Chaque ça qui va parler. Nous va servir comme un tuyau. Et nous même nous cette l'eau fraîche qui va passer dans la vie. Et nous même qui va là, Seigneur, nous sommes réceptifs. Et de l'eau, ça va capable de changer la vie, nous, Seigneur. Nous comptons sur vous, Seigneur. Aidez-nous, Seigneur, et assistez-nous. Et nous va continuer à louer nous. C'est faveur, c'est grâce que nous rendons. Avec pas nous vous péchez nous. Au nom de Jésus, lui-même qui a vivé, qui a prégné pour tout temps et pour tout temps. Amen. Je ne manquerai de rien. Je me faire reposer dans le fier pâturage. Je me dirige vers des eaux paisibles. Il restaure mon âme. Il me conduit dans les sentiers de la justice à cause de son nom. Quand je marche dans la vallée de l'ombre de la mort, je ne crois aucun mal, car tu es avec moi. Ta roulette et ton bâton me rassurent. Tu dresses devant moi une table en face de mes adversaires. Tu réduis ma tête et ma coupe de bol. Oui, le bonheur et la grâce, et la grâce, grâce, tous les jours de ma vie. Amen. Seigneur éternel, notre Dieu, notre Père Céleste, vos papas qui dans le ciel. Cher Seigneur, nous voulons nous vous remercier pour la façon que vous faites nous célébrer. Nous voulons nous remercier pour la grâce. Nous voulons nous remercier pour la bénédiction. Nous voulons nous remercier pour la guérison. Nous voulons nous remercier pour la patience. Seigneur, patience. Merci. Parce que si ce n'est pas de patience, nous ne pouvons pas compter que nous nous taillons pour nous. Si ce n'est pas de patience, après deux ans, malade, nous avons mouru. Mais nous, nous avons besoin de patience. Merci Seigneur pour guérison. Merci pour guérison. Pour son docteur par excellent. Nous nous remercions. Maman de papa. On va toucher tout le monde sur la soeur nous, frère nous l'autre là. Maman de va toucher yo. Ou même qui compte faire bon toucher. Bon, si c'est ou même qui touche yo, il a touché pour le temps et pour l'éternité. Cher Seigneur, une fois encore nous nous remercions pour tout ça qui t'est fait déjà et ça qui est pour faire pendant trois jours. Mando papa, on va célébrer avec nous dans le nom de Jésus. at your knees, Lord. How unworthy we are to be at your feet. Lord, I just, I praise you and I thank you for all of these beautiful, beautiful women here, Lord God. Their beautiful voices, their languages, Lord. Their faces. Their beautiful hearts. Oh, Heavenly Father, break our hearts this weekend. Lord, embrace us challenge us, encourage us. May we be audacious and bold to make a change in our life this weekend. Don't let us walk out that door. Don't let us walk out these doors without a change, Lord. Don't let us leave it here either, Lord. Convict us, push us, challenge us. Lord, in that challenge, is where you're at, Lord, so much, Lord. That's what we have to, have to, have to lean on you. We cannot do this without you. Lord, we are your little daughters. We're your little girls. You are our mighty king, our warrior, our defender, our savior. Lord, I just, I exalt you. I celebrate you. I lift you up, Lord God. I just thank you and I praise you and I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy to speak your name. Oh, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, you're all merciful and loving and kind and healing. Lord, just may you place your anointing all over these beautiful women this weekend. Love them, embrace them, Lord. Give us the right words, the right words to say to each other, Lord. Birth in us. Let us birth these beautiful words that you have given us. These gifts. Throw out the competitiveness, the envy, the jealousy. Anything that in those bad seeds that we have, Lord, just break them. Break them, Lord. Force us to be better. Force us to be the 
royal daughters of a king that we should be, Lord. We should be royal. Lord, we're unworthy that we get to sit here tonight and join together this weekend when last week or last year we had no place to go. Lord, some of us had to sit in our homes and in our core churches and watch this from a distance. Some of us were blessed to be here, Lord, but you have made a way. You've made a way to bring all of us together this weekend. I praise you in your mighty and matchless heavenly name, the all triune God, Lord. You are everything. Amen. has spoken as the prayer was spoken in Spanish uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit um, the prayer was being heard all of the prayers were being heard but we want to focus at this moment to the children's home in Mexico at this moment we just want to thank each core for helping us support our children's home the Mexico children's house um, takes children from the age of 5 to 16 years old. They attend school daily. In their spare time, the children complete chores, enjoy dancing, and playing on the playground. The children eat rice, beans, tortilla, tortillas, milk, vegetables, and meat. Sponsorship funds provide holistic orphan care through sources such as psychologists, social workers, school uniforms, and field trips. The mission of the Salvation Army Children's Home is meeting human needs without distinction or race or creed. Our specific interest in a children's home is to the physical, social, and spiritual and emotional well-being of the most vulnerable young of our society, providing adequate resources. So our goal this year is $28,215, but we raised $30,161.25. Ladies, give yourself a hand. This was outstanding. We went above and beyond what our goal was. I know a lot of you baked things, sold things, did what you had to do. Thank you so much. The children at the Mexico Children's Home thanks you. But if you want to continue, if you felt like you didn't give enough or you didn't have a chance to give any, you can still do that this weekend. Right outside those doors will be tables and we will be selling sweatshirts, t-shirts, diamond dots, fanny packs, all sorts of things. And we'll take your money. And that money will be applied to the children's home so that they can have the life that they deserve. So at this time, I'm going to switch gears again. I want to invite a special person on stage, Major C.C. Lalonde. C.C., I know you're probably saying, why should call me back up here? Cece is retiring. So we just want to honor you tonight because this is going to be your last women's retreat. Unless you want to continue to come. We'll, we'll, we'll take you. Okay. <laughs> because you're going to hit a very special milestone, you're retiring in June. And we would like to show you our appreciation at this time. Don't we, ladies? Major Cece and I, we walked into the Salvation Army Training School together. We spent two years together. <laughs> you became my friend. And now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> yeah. 
we prayed together. We shared meals together. She can cook. <laughs> Our daughters became best friends. They got in a lot of trouble together. <laughs> but I just want to tell you, I'm so proud of you, CC. You have served the Lord and your core with gladness, tirelessly, faithfully, and with great compassion of your flock. You've, you have planted seeds of hope and love in the lives of the people and truly made a difference. You have shown hospitality to all and given encouragement to many. Now as the story, which is your life, opens to its next chapter, may the God of grace richly bless and watch over you. May the God of peace grant you peace always and may, God, may the God of abundant joy shower you daily. And I'm gonna leave you with my scripture verse. I know what I am planning for you, says the Lord. I have plans to give you hope and a good future. We love you, Cece, and congratulations. I just like to say thank you for every, everybody here. I like to say thank you for Naples Car, Edison Car. It is not God, sunset God, Haiti, but they're not here. Uh, I enjoy with you. I'm so blessed I have time to work with you. God bless you. And God continue to bless you. Thank you. Amen. We have a few announcements. The nurse for the weekend is... Major Lynn Irish. Major Lynn, are you in here? Somewhere in here. Way in the back, waving her hand. That's Major Lynn. And she's there for you. There is one reminder I want to make sure that you all make sure that you take your prescribed medication while you are here this weekend. We want you to remain healthy so that you can continue to celebrate. We also have a prayer garden across the um, yard. And ladies, take advantage of the prayer garden. If you want to take a friend with you, please feel free to do so. The atmosphere over there is beautiful. It's nice and quiet, and you'll enjoy some meditation. We have a photo booth as well that's out in the courtyard. It's set up to take some amazing pictures for your enjoyment. And please make sure your core takes some photos. And we also have the merchandise table that I explained to you earlier, stop by, and Apostle Aquinla has a table out there out that will be set up the whole entire weekend. She has some books that she has written. Um, there's one specific book that we are currently using for our girl group study at DHQ, and it's called Before You Call Me Sis. Very good read. You'll read it all, and you won't want to put it down. So stop by her table, and also stop by our table to enjoy some merchandise. How do you post, you ask? You can hashtag us by hashtag celebrate WG2020. And we'll get to see all your pictures and we will upload them on our Facebook page for everyone to see. Now, ladies, there is one more announcement. After this uh, program, we will have an afterglow party. Colonel Don, could you please come up here? It is. <laughs> Colonel Don, this Afterglow celebration is in your honor. I don't know if you remember, but every time you came in my office and you said, what is this Afterglow thing? And I was just like, it's nothing. And I kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, Lord, please forgive me because I am lying to my supervisor. <laughs> but we were trying to keep a secret and it's hard to keep a secret from Colonel Don. We sent out letters to the field they all have brought you gifts because you are a gift giver. So you will be showered with gifts tonight. So Rebecca has a crown for you as well as a sash. <laughs> Ladies, we can do better than that. Thank you. <laughs> Colonel Don, 
Remember the 8.30 a.m. board meetings and those yearly car reports? Well, now is your chance to stop remembering those. In fact, forget them all. You're free. Okay. okay. And I'm smiling just thinking about the time that you're going to spend on the lake. But I know Colonel is probably thinking about it now. Here's to enjoy your happy place in retirement. Wishing you all the best as you retire. Knowing you, you'll still be busy as ever. Maybe not Colonel, but I know you will be. <laughs> Warmest congratulations. Whatever your plans you, that you pursue in retirement, we wish you well. We love you and job well done. So ladies, at the end, um, we are going to ask you to follow through the doors, and we have a party set up in honor of Colonel Don, and she will go in and open up all of her gifts, and we can celebrate. We have cake and punch as well, so we can all celebrate Colonel Don's retirement. And praise man, would you close us out? Yeah.